Laura. I'm going to show you how to make the Great Pyramid of Giza out of paper. I'll also show you how to make some camel and some Egyptian people so that you can play with your pyramid when you're done. To make the Great Pyramid of Giza, you'll need four sheets of paper, scissors, and glue. You may also want a pencil, something to color with, and a ruler. I'm going to make the pyramid using a template that I've already created, but you could create one yourself if you'd like to. To use a template that I've already created, you'll want to visit my Etsy shop at etsy.com slash shop slash fanfaron and purchase it for a few dollars. If you'd rather create the template yourself, I'm going to tell you the measurements that I've used and you'll start by drawing four triangles. And my triangles are about nine and three quarter inches long and they're about seven and three quarter inches tall. So if you draw a dot in the middle of your bottom line, then you can draw these sideways lines to connect the triangle at the top. And then two of your triangles need to have tabs added to the sides that you'll use to glue later. If you want to color your pyramid, do that now. I didn't color mine because I chose to print it on some tan colored paper so that it would look similar to what the pyramids look like today. Back when the pyramids were first created, they were probably covered in polished limestone, so they would have been shiny and maybe a little bit lighter than what you see today. The next step is to cut around the outside of each of your pyramid pieces by cutting on these black dashed lines. If you're wondering what this little thing is right here, this is actually the entrance, the original entrance that was made to the Great Pyramid of Giza. And inside there are three known chambers. We think that it might have been a burial chamber for a pharaoh. If you visit the Great Pyramid today, you're going to enter into a different entrance that's kind of below the entrance that you see right here. And it was made, we think, by people who were robbing the tomb many years ago. All right, my pieces are cut out, so now I'm gonna fold on the gray dotted lines. And I'm gonna do that on my north and south pieces. So I'm just finding my line. I'm trying to be pretty precise. And then I'm gonna press it down with my thumb, just like that. So I've got one, two, three, four tab to fold. My tabs are folded and I'm ready to glue. So I'm just gonna put glue on the tabs. And these are my east and west sides of the pyramid and it doesn't matter which one is which because they are exactly the same. So I'm just gonna try and line up all my edges as exact as I can here and then press down to make sure the glue sticks. Do that on this side too. And now I'm going to add this last part here. Now this pyramid, when it's finished, is only going to be about six and a half inches tall. But the original pyramid, when it was created, was the tallest structure, oops, wrong side, in the world for almost 4,000 years. You might be wondering how tall it was. It was about 480 feet tall.
which is about 146 and a half meters. Okay, now I'm pressing down, making sure my glue's on there secure. Oh, look, see, now this side isn't. I didn't press that down enough. Just do that again. Okay, and here's my last side. Must have been pretty amazing for visitors who are coming to Giza for the first time to see all the pyramids that were there, tall and shining in the sunlight. Must have been very impressive. All right, here it is, the Great Pyramid of Giza. Camels and Egyptian people are just a little bonus that's going to come with your pyramid if you purchase it. I'm also going to put the people on my website at fanfaronbylaura.com and you can click on downloads and those will be free for you if you made the pyramid yourself and want the people to play with. These people are a whole lot bigger than people really are compared to the pyramid. And that's because if I made them the size people really would be compared to the pyramid, they'd be so tiny. You couldn't play with them at all. So they're bigger, but if you want to make them a little smaller when you print them, you can scale it so that they are like 75% or 50% of the size that they are as you see them. And then you'll want to color everything. Egyptian people often wore white because it was cooler, so you may want to leave your dress and his skirt, maybe, I don't know what they called it, white. And this is his headdress. So I'm probably gonna make that striped, but it's not actually his hair, so you can make it a color that hair would not be. You can choose how you wanna cut your people and your camels out. On this person, I cut all the way around the edges. On this one, I just left a little extra space around the edges to make it easier to cut. And on this camel, I cut around the edges, but I left this space right here so I could attach a stand to it easily. Or maybe you just kind of want to cut out a square. That works too. So these are the stands for my people. I'm going to go ahead and cut them apart. And then I'm going to fold on all of these gray dotted lines. So, folding backwards on all of them. Now I'm going to glue these smaller pieces together to make a triangle. So I put glue on one side and on my fingernail. Oops. And then I'm going to press those together, just like this. And then I'm going to put glue on the back of my lady here. I'm going to put an extra piece of paper under her so I don't get glue all over my desk. And then I'm going to put the stand right against the back of her. Make sure I've got it in the right place, not quite, slide her over. And then, you're just going to press down. And you can see that I did not cut out the paper between her feet because I knew I'd just be putting more white behind her so that would make extra work for myself. So, do the same thing for your pharaoh or your Egyptian man. And then for the camel, if you do cut out between the legs, you'll need two stands for each camel, which I included on there. If you choose to leave this space right here um, solid with paper, you probably only need one stand. And I would put it kind of right here in the middle of the camel, just like that. I decided I wanted my people and my camels cut out most of the way, so I went ahead and did that before I finished putting the stands on. But again, that's not necessary. But I do have one last idea here for you here. So if you have some extra fabric laying around and you wanted to give your camel a saddle, you could glue some fabric on there. 
Or you could actually draw the saddle, I suppose, and draw some reins. Or you could use some string, put a little loop in some string and give your camel a lead rope or some reins. So just some extra fun ideas that you can add if you want to, but it's certainly not necessary. Hope you had fun.